Hey guys, Virtus Education here with episode 1 of the Blueprints Creation series. And in this series, we're going to be creating a few little bits and bobs inside of Blueprints to give us a general understanding of how Blueprints works, and most importantly, create a few things for us to dive into the engine. And in today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to create a sliding door inside of Blueprints with a few different components. Those being a matinee actor, a trigger box, some lighting, uh, some little actors uh, that can move, and also some sound. So let's just quickly take a look at what we're going to be creating. So as you can see here, when I walk up towards this door, it automatically slides open and you can see we get this light that lightens up to invite the player in and it also closes itself automatically once we're done. So let's just go ahead and eject out of that and take a look at what we have here. So I'm just going to open up the level blueprints by pressing blueprints up here and open the blueprints and you can see it's actually really really simple. Whenever someone steps on the trigger box, it goes ahead and press play. Then after a small duration of time, that being 3 seconds using a delay node, it then goes on to setting it to reverse to bring it back into the original state. And all of this is set to work with a matinee actor. And let's just go ahead and take a look at this matinee actor so you can see what's going on here. And then I'll go ahead and delete all of this and we'll start to, play, uh, we'll start to create it ourselves. So, we've got a few different tracks here. We've got door 1, 2, lighting, and sound. So if I go ahead and press play, you can see the doors open, and uh, if I press close, if I press reverse, it just goes ahead and closes those. So that's pretty much how it works. Everything's centered around the blueprint script and matinee. So, let's just go ahead and uh, get started, shall we? So I'm just going to quickly delete this, and then we can start to create it. Just quickly delete every little element. There isn't too much here, so it should be relatively easy. Also, look at all the kids in the background. Uh, it's just my sister singing to some really bad songs. So, let's go ahead and delete the doors as well. So, first and foremost, before we can create sliding doors, we're going to need some doors. So I'm going to go ahead and ho head over to the content browser. I'm going to go to props. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the glass window here, as this works just as well for a door. So, once we've done that, I'm going to close the content browser, and we want, these to be a, we want two of these, and we want them to be about halfway. Now, I can't necessarily judge halfway too well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it the full length, which should be around 4.25, if I remember correctly. In this case, you're going to have to play around with the exact values yourself. So I'm just going to put this in here, and you can see it's 4.25, and I need to divide that by 2 because I'm going to want 2 doors. So that should be 2.125, and you can now see I've got a door which is exactly half the width of the doorway. So I'm just going to control V, uh, sorry, control C and control V to copy that. I'm just going to move, uh, move it back, control C, control V. And then I'm going to move it into place. Now, you can see my pivot point is a little off here. I want the pivot point to be on this side so I can just drag it into the wall easily. Just like I can like this. So, let's just go ahead and transform this. Now, what transforming does, just, uh, sorry, mirroring does, it just essentially allows you to completely flip it. So, in this case, I want to flip it on the Y axis. So, I'm going to right click it, go to transform and press mirror Y axis. And we can see now it is, uh, the pivot point is on the right hand side. So, that's pretty much our doors. So, let's just go ahead and uh, add in the other elements. So, I also had a light. So, I'm going to dump in a point light here. And I'm going to set the default intensity to zero, because we don't want it to be on whenever we do anything. And I'm also going to give it a little bit of color. I'm going to make it a nice, bright, Xeon style blue. And we're also going to have some sound. So from the content browser, let's just go ahead and add in the sound box. Now keep in mind, some of these little extras you don't actually have to put in, like the sound or the lighting, you don't need it. The most important stuff is just the, uh, the most important thing is the doors here. Now the only real relevant sound here is light, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to make sure this also doesn't turn on automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set auto activate to unchecked, and everything should be good. So, let's just go ahead and uh, start to script this. So, with the doors, uh, with one of the doors selected, just go over to Matinee, 
add matinee and then from here we'll be confronted by the matinee interface so let's just go ahead and create a few uh, groups now the first group I want is going to be for the door so whatever you are making a group make sure you have whatever object you want to manipulate selected so I'm gonna click the door here then right click and go to empty group and I'm gonna call this door 1 also note the fact that it's changed the uh, the glass windows mo mobility to movable so now we've got the door one track let's go ahead and set a movement track because we want these doors to actually move we want them to slide across so add new movement track and we want to go ahead and find a duration of time which will be suitable for this door so I'd say about one second and fifty one second fifty should be good so I'm gonna press enter to make a new keyframe and I'm gonna press control click to drag it along here and then from there I can just go ahead and select the door and I can drag it into the wall as if it was sliding make sure you have this little just key movement one icon up so let's just go ahead and drag this in to the open position and if I go ahead and press stop and play you can see it open up just like that and it looks really really great so now I need to do the same for the other door so with this back to the start point I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got the door selected the other one right click add new empty group and I'm gonna call this door 2 and it's changed the mobility of this glass window to uh, movable just like the last stuff and once again new movement track I'm gonna click it, press enter, move it up to 1.5 seconds, and then drag it in just like that. Let's go ahead and press play, and we now have our sliding doors. So let's just go ahead and quickly add in the little lighting real quick. So add new lighting group, I'm gonna keep the name, and over here on intensity, I'm going to make two keyframes, one to start off with, and the second one, I'm actually going to change the intensity. So how we do that is with that selected when we got our keyframes in the intensity timeline, I'm gonna select the light, I'm gonna go over to details and set this to something like 5,000. 5,000 may seem a little overkill, but it should be just fine for now. So if we go ahead and press stop and play, you can see it gradually gets lighter while it builds up to that 1.5 seconds. And if I go ahead and press reverse, you can see it dims as I close it. So last, last but not least, we're going to add in the sound. So I'm going to add in a new empty group. Let's call it. I'm just going to leave it with that name. I'm going to do add new soundtrack. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter, and you'll see we got the light sound. Now the reason that it came up the light sound when I pressed enter is because I had selected this little object here, my little uh, light sound, which I grabbed from the content browser just by going over here and dragging it into the scene. So, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but when I go ahead and press play now, you should hear the light sound, uh, which sounds a bit like a door opening and closing. But that's pretty much everything for the matinee, uh, all but one thing. So, you can see the end time here is actually set to 5 seconds. We need to make sure that we set this down to the exact end point of this and that's going to be 1.5 seconds the reason for that is because we're going to be using some delay stuff if there's extra time uh, extra time it's going to just add it on and it's going to get all confusing so once we've done that let's just go ahead and close that and it's actually now time to start scripting it so let's just go ahead and bring up blueprints so how are we going to do this I'm just going to quickly delete all of this stuff that I had from before now, whenever someone walks up to the door, we need to fire off an event. So, to fire off that event, we're going to be using a trigger. To get a trigger, just go over to the basic tab over here, under placement, and then just go to box trigger, and drag that in. Now, I'm going to make this nice and big, because we want people to be able to automatically open that door from a nice, reasonable distance away. Something like this should be perfectly fine. And now from here, let's just go over to op uh, open up our blueprints again. So what we want to do is add some kind of collision event. So whenever someone collides with the box, you know, as they walk into it, it fires off an event. So with the box trigger selected, I'm going to right click, press add event for trigger box one, go to collision, and then I'm going to go to begin overlap. And from here, we can now hook up whatever event we want to. So, in this case, we want it to make the little matinee, uh, matinee sequence play. So, let's just go ahead and go to our blueprints, right click with the matinee selected, and type in play. Simple as that. Let's drag it in, 
and it should now hopefully open as soon as we walk into that little box there. Walk in, and it opens, the light comes on, the sound plays, but it doesn't actually close at the moment. So we actually need to set up a slight delay and then make it close. So to do that, let's just go ahead and type in delay, and then just press enter. And then just go ahead and drag it up. And we want to delay of about 3-4 seconds before it actually closes. Let's just set this duration to 3. Now you could use some kind of variable to hook it up to here. But we won't be worrying about that for now. And lastly, we want to be ha we want to have a reverse event for the matinee. Uh, so having said that, whenever you do try type it in, make sure you still have the matinee hooked up. And it should work. So that should be pretty much everything for our script. Let's just go ahead and press compile, close level blueprints, press play, possess, and uh, let's see if it works. So I'm going to run up to it, walk through, and it should close off by itself. And whenever I walk up to it again, it should open up, and yeah, pretty much working. So there's one last thing. If I was to go ahead and start and try to shoot a projectile through that, you can see we've got some slight collision issues. It looks as if the trigger box is colliding. So let's see if we can fix that. So with the trigger box selected here, scroll down, go down to collision, and you can see that it's set to block projectiles. So let's go ahead and set the collision preset to custom, and then just simply set it to ignore projectiles. And now when I press simulate, possess, and walk up to it and try shoot it when it's open, the bullets now go straight through and it works perfectly. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over. You're pretty, you're feel free to play around with extra elements. Uh, like for example, you could add in other stuff, just like I added in the lighting, the sound effects, and so on. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much everything. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the new Blueprints creation episode. I'll see you then. Goodbye.